We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to the 8th edition of Paris Lit Up Presents. It seems like another age that we began this 8 weeks ago, when confinement in France first began. So many things have changed, and yet so many things have stayed the same. And here we are, still going at it, still trying to encourage artistic expression and bring communities together. We've had some great times over the last eight weeks. We've had some fantastic features. We've had some great performers. We've had people from Malaysia come. We've had people from uh, countries in South America. We've had people from Sweden, uh, Morocco, mainly a lot of people from France, uh, but that's you know what, what we would have expected. Also, another shout out to people who have contributed week in, week out to this video series. Um, Rufo Quintavalle, for example, has had a video in every single week. Vivian Vermez has faithfully uh, produced something almost every week. Uh, and John Hicks as well has, has been doing some good things there. But also, thank you to everyone else who has constantly uh, added to what it is that we are doing. It's great to see that artistic expression has still been uh, going, okay? And it's still been great to see, you know, your weekly uh, contributions to this. Uh, but just to tell you from, you know, from my point of view, from, um, you know, putting it all together, it still has the same worries uh, as an open mic night will do, okay? Uh, you're still worried about, you know, will there be enough people who are going to turn up this week? Uh, will anyone indeed, you know, come and watch it on the night? Uh, and obviously that big question is, you know, why the hell are we doing this, right? <laughs> you know, that, that, that doesn't happen all the time, but it, it does happen. Sometimes you wonder... Why? And then you're like, ah, yes, we're doing it uh, because, you know, our goal at Paris Lit Up is to encourage artistic expression and to build communities based on this artistic expression. And when you when you think, OK, this is what we're doing, that is when you feel a little bit of a relief uh, for it. And for example, it's great to see that in this week's edition of Paris Lit Up, our featured performer former is uh, Tanya Gotham, who uh, was with us in September in Paris. Uh, and she is based in Heidelberg and she has a piano and poetic duo and it's great to see her coming back as a feature uh, for us and that's for me that is that is a marker of success in building a community in reaching out to people and into making the gap between everyone a little bit narrower because that's the fundamental objective of Paris Up. it's not whether we are doing this for ourselves for our own sort of like benefit or uh, if indeed you know we're doing it for that tiny amount of prestige that we get for belonging to such an association but we do it for art right we do it for culture we do it for books we do it for poems we do it for villanelles we do it for dancing we do it for theater we do it for cinema we do it for this new thing called video poetry that is why we do it it's not it's not the ego it's not the the glory it's not the self improvement no it is purely and simply for the art. And now the future. What what will what will happen to this? What will happen to this venture that we have called Paris of Up Presents? Now we've got three more feature performers, including the one tonight uh, for May. And then we have a special surprise for you in June. Okay, then that, that's a featuring a project called Word Trip Europe, but there is, will be more about that to come on uh, on the airwaves or indeed the social media scrolls. And then after that, you know, uh, would we continue PLU Presents, which was essentially a project made during confinement? Um, do we want to do that? Do we want to go forward with it? Do we want to make it into something bigger and better? Uh, do we want to reduce the number? Are we trying to get back into the bar, Culture Rapide, as soon as possible to open the open mic night again on Thursday evenings? These are questions that are very much open. And... If you are somewhat involved with this community, I would ask you if you have any ideas, any suggestions, uh, anything that you liked, anything that you didn't like, anything that you know, reach out to us. Let us know what you think and how we can go forward and how we can continue to fulfill the goal of encouraging artistic expression and bringing people together in a community over that artistic expression. Your opinion would be very much appreciated. So. That's my spiel done. I hope you enjoy the first half. I will see you afterwards to wish you all the best for the break. 
and then finally I'll be saying goodbye at the end. So over to the talented, amazing and fantastic performers who have contributed to this week's PLU Presents. Hello. I'd like you to do something for me, if you would. And above all, for yourself. It's a very simple thing, but I promise you it will have a profound effect on your whole life. Interested? All right, then. Every morning when you get up, starting tomorrow, I want you to look in the mirror. Take a good, long look at yourself. I know, it's not a pretty sight. Nevertheless, take a deep breath, peer into your tired old eyes. Hello, is there anyone at home? Keep a straight face and say the words, I am a winner. Now, I know this, this may seem challenging. Your ex can't stand you. Your kids never visit. Career, that's a joke. You can barely pay the rent. And can you honestly remember the last time you got laid? Objectively, your life is a catastrophe. So saying those words with any kind of conviction ain't going to be easy. I know that. But say it anyway. However stupid it makes you feel. Grit your teeth and spit those damned words out. I am a winner. And it may take a month. It may take a year. It may take the rest of your lousy life. But one thing I can guarantee that if you keep the faith and trust in the magic formula, then sooner or later, despite all the evidence to the contrary, you will actually begin to believe it. You'll find yourself sauntering down the street of the new stride and speaking with a new voice. In the bar, it's no longer, uh, sorry, could I possibly, now it's barman, give me a beer. The new you. One of those people you've always detested, but couldn't help envying. Of course, in reality, you'll still be the same. Screwing up in the same old ways, blundering around, never learning a damn thing. No one's ever going to change that. It's just that you'll feel differently. And this changes everything. The guy sauntering down the street with the beautiful woman on his arm, he's no richer than any of us. He's no smarter. He's no better looking either. So how did he persuade her that he was the one? You got it by first of all persuading himself that he was. Self-belief. A belief in your own entitlement. Nothing more, nothing less. That's what it's all about. I am a winner. Say it. No, no, I, d I don't believe it. Say it as if you really meant it. Yes, there you go. You're on your way. In the centre of the world turns Lazarica. Her father fell from the broken branch her husband fell from the broken tree. Lazarica, Lazarica, dance in the centre of the spinning world till your father stands upright, till your husband's blood is as sap, till the seasons circle in harmony. Lazarica, Lazarica, mend the broken tree. In the centre of the world, turn, turn, Lazarica. It was the third Saturday in April, the festival of Lazarica, a celebration of food and flowers, the day when the dead prized open the gates of heaven, waved greetings to the living and showered them with blessings. The violin struck a chord that hung suspended in the air before it faded into silence. It was the pause between sounds, between seasons, the crack in the night through which the dead slipped, to speak to the living in their dreams, the inhaled breath that contains all the unmanifest power of the wind. The 
rough strains of the violin and the staccato beat of hands bounced off each other and around the trees, stirring the crowd to join in the dance. A long human chain of villagers quite forgot the troubles of the winter, made a larger circle around the young couples. The circle spun in opposite directions so that each dancer saw a flashing procession of eyes, hands and feet merging into a hypnotic blur of light and changing colour. Faster and faster they turned. Mariuka felt the hand that held hers release her and she too took her place in the centre. Her arms rose as if of their own accord, the headscarf that hung down her back swaying around her like a black snake, her hips undulating so that her whole body rippled, as if moved by a current that came from somewhere in the centre of the earth. At that moment an electricity passed, coming from her and yet not of her, for though she and her dance had conjured it, she was still but a part of it. The chords of the violin grew more strident, like an animal calling in the night. In the spaces between chords, Paraskeva felt a new presence caught in the centre of the circles, and the circles were caught by it. It passed from hand to hand, magnetic, causing the human wheels to spin with a momentum of their own. In that moment in the dancing, the doors that divided worlds flew open, and in place of each person's separate being, there was the dark space inside them that connected them to power and magic. Each villager would remember that moment, some in fear, some with longing, when they lost themselves to the dark and found another lightness within it. You have chosen wisely, Doug. 
How prudent to choose an undying wizard and your own skeleton wife over your foul-mouthed friend. This body will be an adequate vessel. Now, stand still as my minions strip the flesh from your bones, betrayer. Yes, you shall be a fine ornament to my legions. I shall make you my footstool. Doug, Doug, it's me. I know you're getting the flesh stripped off your bones and you got dead wife problems, but I'm having a, a goddamn existential crisis over here. Am I a guy with a dead wizard in my ass, or am I a dead wizard with a living dude stuck up his ass? Anyway, I just popped in here to deliver a special fuck you from beyond the grave, you soon-to-be bony piece of shit. I'm glad the wizard took the fucking skin off you and left you one of his shambling minions, you sick, selfish fucker. As you can see, I am now in perfect control. My skeletons stroll the streets in human flesh. Soon they will storm the upper world with confidence. We shall have skeleton bakers, skeleton garbage men, skeleton whores, skeleton artists, skeleton barbers, skeleton soldiers, skeleton undertakers, skeleton gardeners, skeleton everything. The tenuous hold you had on my vessel, this baggy mortal sack, was the only thing holding my true power at bay. Your cowardice displeases me, Doug. I shall take your skeleton wife as my plaything. I have left enough of you alive in your new form to see, to feel, to hate, and you will hate, Doug, when I please your skeleton wife in your best friend's form, the friend you betrayed on the word of a shrewd and completely evil necromancer. Ha 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 ha, you idiot. <laughs> Well, what the fuck did you think was gonna happen, Doug, you rat bastard? It's called making a deal with the devil, dude. You don't need a fucking degree in dark magic to know that you can't trust a dead-ass wizard when he offers to bring your skeleton wife back to life, you dickless motherfucker. You know what? I'm gonna bang her too, just like I did your sister. I'm gonna put a pink ribbon on her spinal cord so I can tell the difference. And whenever I get control back from the wizard, I'm gonna beeline for that pink ribbon. It's called revenge banging, Doug. That's when you slam your skeleton friend's dead wife because he threw you to the fucking skeletons in the first place. Now that you are my minion, you will see the true extent of our progress. We have mined all the cemeteries of World War I and World War II for more warriors. Our scouts have spread across Europe. Already the dead outnumber the living. With my magic and ever-growing grasp of your technology, our victory is inevitable. But I shall, how you say, play it cool. Keep snatching you off the streets. Target politicians, for I am a cunning old fox, Doug. I'll hire marketing agencies, and they'll make my offer of eternal life a beautiful thing. And people will line the streets to join my legion. Yeah, thanks so much for fucking over the whole earth, Doug. Great move there, numbnuts. I fucking loved you, man. You were the only family I ever had except my dad. Except you never got shit-faced and slammed my head off the fridge. You were the only thing about my life that was pure and safe. And now I think I hate you. Even more than I hate him. Hi, Barris. So happy to be here. Um, we are Moonlit Brooks. This is Danny Seidel, who's going to be playing the piano, and I'm Daniel, and I'm going to be doing some poetry, and I'm really glad that even during this lockdown, from miles away, we can join you tonight um, with our online arrangement. And thank you so much, Paris Lit Up, for organizing um, these open mics every Thursday, even still. And it's really amazing to be a part of this, and I also would like to extend my gratitude to Gosha, who's helped us in making all the videos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the show and stay home, stay safe, and see you sometime soon.
There are times when you get so tired of people asking you how you are and so you go away somewhere to be with yourself to find out how you really are at the cemetery you walk past grave after grave finding peace on your way to each of these unrelated resting souls such a strange place to feel peace at but i know why you do because no one here is going to recognize you or walk up to you and ask how's it going hey what did you do today everybody here has the same obvious answer there's no one to disturb them no one to disturb you there is no chaos here no formality and the only thing that breaks this leaf drop silence is the sound that the old man makes with his crutches he struggles to remove the fallen yet golden leaves from his wife's grave he stands not so far away from you so you think that it might be easier if you just help him but you don't because it's not your place to help this is the only way that he can spend time with his beloved now the only way that he can find peace for himself so no formalities there's no one to disturb him no one to disturb you it's such a quiet place such a quiet place to feel peace at This one's for all of you who talk to the mirror. Hey there gorgeous. You had a good time tonight. Got great hugs. You seem really happy. But restless at the same time. I know how you're feeling. That's cuz I know who you are. You're feeling like that blinking cursor on your computer screen. that could type all the words in the world but doesn't know where to begin constantly blinking but just blinking you feel like your eyes and you're melting melting and drifting away from everyone like two sheets of ice that drift away from each other you're feeling restless not because of the horrible drinks that you had tonight but because you're constantly trying to understand why you were left alone in the mall as a kid left alone to eat an ice cream when what you'd actually gone for is family shopping you can't be normal because you're thinking why your father doesn't call you you feel like you've been thrown overboard you're feeling abandoned you're feeling annoyed because you don't remember the first time that you bought your own chocolate alone but you remember that you were four when you saw and understood your first war in your own home and you understood it enough that you tried stopping it i know what you've been through but enough enough of going back to that time and enough of showing fake stars in your eyes and enough of proving it to yourself that you're so strong when all you're made of darling are just brittle bones And for how long? For how long do you want to stay stuck? For how long do you want to stand still in this crossfire of your own thoughts? You need to get out of this. There is someone out there telling you that it's okay to feel hurt. Just let it all out until it's finished and make a world of your own. I know that it kills you. I know that there are nights when you've tried to put an end to everything again but you couldn't find the rope or you didn't know how to tie the knot 
the knot in the rope and the knot in your relations. I know that it feels like you're burning and you're collapsing, but I also know that you know that this is exactly how the galaxies are made, so burn and make a world of your own and stop doing this. Stop trying to understand why they did what they did, not just them, but everyone. Stop putting yourself in their shoes. Stop putting yourself in anyone's shoes. They don't fit you. They will not fit you. Or okay, maybe someday you can go out there and find yourself the matching pair. But tonight, honey, I am sorry. I am so sorry that your own shoes are too big for you. Oh, wow. Well done, everyone. Bravo, bravo. Good job, good job. Very good. Wasn't that a fantastic first round? Yeah? You know what I mean? It was good, wasn't it? Um, so, thank you very much for uh, watching this first round. Go and have a break. I'll see you in about 30 minutes at 10 o'clock uh, Central e European Summertime uh, for the second round of PLU Presents. Thank you. If one could win at this, what would one win? If Santos calls me, he tells me that somebody's in here who's going to take control of the game. So what do you want me to do about it? I can show you how to pick the right card. My name is Robak. When do we begin? Everything is based on this floor. Mm -hmm. Versus here. And here. Check the measurements. <laughs> You must be Mr. Bunch. At dawn, the breeze. Words, women, and song. You got... And this is Mr. Zaft. Just Zaft. Mr. didn't fit on the shirt. The tiny death. And a fat ampersand as answer. There's plenty of things I regret. Prisoners have suspended time. I mean, I'm not like Edith Piaf or something. I'm having a drink with Dave in the pub. He looks round the bar to make sure no one's listening. He leans across and he says in a low voice, I got something to tell you, Ron. But first, I want you to promise you won't tell no one else. My lips are sealed, I says. I've had a what's it? You know, one of them epifannies. You what? An epifanny. I woke up in the middle of the night and suddenly I knew. It was like it was written in giant neon letters. You are a woman. 
What? Shh. I'm a person of the female gender. How many have you had, I says. My first today, straight up. You don't look like a woman, I says, looking him up and down. No, but I am. I've always thought there was something wrong, but I could never put my finger on it. But now I know. But now I know it's like I've been born again. And it's, it's wonderful. Only properly this time, reborn. I never really liked being a bloke. Down the pub, night after night, playing darts, talking about football. I hate fucking football. I want to talk about babies. Babies, I says. Yeah, and clothes. I mean, look at us. Jeans, beaten up old sneakers. I want to wear a mini skirt and eye heels and show off me legs. I want to get me hair done and me, and me eyebrows waxed. And I want to have feelings. Women are allowed to touch each other. They can put their arm round their mate and give her a cuddle. A bloke tries any of that. People think he's a perv. Women are allowed to live. Yeah, you must fancy blokes then, I says. That's the funny thing, he says. I'm really still into women. You know what that means, don't you? This is my mate Dave. He's a lesbian. You're right, he says. I must be. I'm changing my name, of course. What are you going to call yourself? Deborah. Deborah, I says. Blimey. I'm not the man you thought I was, am I? No, you're not. You're the woman I thought you wasn't. Deborah, stroll on. Same again? No. I'll have a glass of white wine, he says. Bloody hell. I catch the barmaid's eye. Another pint, please, love. And a glass of white wine? I'm sorry, she says. Why? Wine? So my bare feet fly on the concrete floor. I cut the mother of all coal. Hair still wet from the sunshine flood. I gotta see the dark to unknown. My head aches. My heart breaks. Oh, I'm bracing for the next aching fit of her and sweaty shiver. Skin and bones don't matter, don't blame it on the fever. When you feel the temperature rise, temperature rise, don't blame it on the fever. When you feel Temperature eyes, temperature eyes, my naked eye, looking to get out. I gotta lay down somewhere in the dark, whisper storming through the window. Well, I'm trying to let go, see, I'm dying not to fight, except the walls are slowly crawling in and out of sight. And my mind, oh, dark as me weather. Rain or shine, don't matter. Don't blame it on the fever. When you feel the temperature rise, temperature rise, don't blame it on the fever. When the temperature rise, temperature rise. Something I hoping I can make a change, but maybe for the better. I don't want to see this world on flame. My body aches too. Don't blame it 
on the fever, don't blame it on the fever. When the temperature rises, when the temperature rises, don't blame it on the fever. When you feel the temperature rise, temperature rise. Do 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 do. It's where we live, never dreaming of upper floors, wondering where the stairway goes, listening to the sound of water draining down, involution from other worlds. It's gold. Happy in our darkness. Happy in our constant sin. Waiting for the day, they said. The sun will come in. They said the sun would come in. They said the sun would come. They said here comes the sun. question going around in this world since ages a question that everyone asks of every other one they meet what according to is love how do you define it well what is it hey is it loyalty compassion is it the deepest of emotions is it a friendship or a longing that you feel for only a certain someone? I don't know. But I can tell when I feel it, and I have felt it, from many people, in its many forms. And there's no one way of defining it. But there are also times when I've felt the 
failure, the absolute failure of expressing myself. And so as a summary of everything that I was feeling, that night I chose to say the following words. I love you. <laughs> and so I think love is something we made up. Like, like a lot of other things, love also is something that we made up. Something to say in the moments when what you're feeling is just so undescribable. And like a lot of other things, love also does not come with a pre-decided timeline of existence. And so there are people who tell you that love is a day whose dawn will see its dusk. I don't agree with it. But then if it is, then I wish that you have a long, fine day. And that the weather is in your favor. Guess I just got lucky, hey? Yeah, I guess I just got lucky because through this window by my bed, I can see my neighbor. So hot and gorgeous. So freaking gorgeous. It's just unbelievable. And I mean, we live at an unusually close distance. So close it feels suspicious, if not wrong. So close that it's hard, really hard, to separate myself from him. It, it's, it's not like I secretly peek into his bedroom, okay? I just, I mean, it's just right there. <laughs> oh, but this one time, I saw him come out of the shower, his tall and muscular body with water dripping down, drop by drop, from his smooth skin, smooth like the soft, fresh leaves of a tree in spring, so tender and delicate, and the way he looks up to the sky with his neck all stretched. And I've seen some quite steamy and exciting things too, you know, like see sometimes he has visitors. Visitors with their light and slim bodies climbing all over him, sitting on him in all those precious places that I dream of sitting on myself one day. Touching him everywhere with their slim fingers and laying gentle kisses. Oh, how he burns me in envy. He knows I exist and somehow manages to never show it. I'm still waiting for him to notice me, you know. I hardly ever put anything, I mean, any curtains on. Why would I anyway? It's, it's the most beautiful goddamn view I've ever had. Neither does he put on any curtains. I mean, we're both exhibitionists, I guess. And you know, for a few hours on a sunny day, he and I shine under the same sun. I can see his body becoming all golden and shiny, like the glistening leaves of a tree in spring. Every hour is a golden hour when I look at him, and his fine flickering shadows drawing me in with every, with every move he makes. The way his long and strong hands stretch every morning, opening his mouth wide for the sexiest yawn this world has ever seen. God. Damn! And while this all is happening, I lay bare under the sheets on my bed, feeling my skin against my blanket, restless and wanting, turning and twisting, trying to stop thinking about him, stop thinking about this one time when I walked past him on the road. And he smelled like the freshly wet earth after a rainfall. A scent so inviting and unforgettable and exciting, oh baby, the things I'd do to him if he were just a touch more close. How I'd lay on his lap, 
with his legs as strong as the roots of a mighty tree. Looking up at his finely carved chest, his jawline making me bite my fist, waiting for his head to bow down and his soft silky hair rubbing against my skin, soft like the fresh leaves of a tree in spring. Ah, oh, I need to stop. I need to stop thinking about him. This can't be right. Oh, I need to stop. What if, what if he gets to know all of this one day? What will he even think about me? About how I've been invading his privacy since I moved in. How I watched him last autumn as he stripped himself naked. Oh, so beautifully naked. This can't be right. But well, what's wrong in adoring the sexiest creature alive in this universe? This grand and mighty and humongous sycamore tree. This sycamore tree that lives next to my window. What a sexy name, hey? Sycamore. Sycamore. So that has been the eighth edition of Paris the Duck Presents. Thank you very much for everyone who took part in this, who everyone who contributed to the video. Thank you very much to our feature performers of the evening, Moonlit Brooks. And I would like to leave you on a poem that I've not had the chance to read uh, yet uh, during this period of confinement. And it's a poem that I try to finish every open mic night with. And here is the poem. I always forget if it's Auden or Houseman. I think it's Houseman, but the poem is called Blue Remembered Hills. Into my heart, an air that kills from yon far country blows. What are those blue remembered hills? What farms, what spires are those? It is the land of lost content. I see it shining plain. The happy highways where I went and cannot come again. Thank you very much. Have a very good evening. Have a very good week. And we'll be back next week with our feature performer who is Alison Grace Curler. Take very good care, folks. Cheerio. Oh, no, wait. There's one thing I'd like to leave you on as well. I'm going to include in the link to this a uh, link to the web page of Paris of Dope with a small button where you can donate any money. So if there's any uh, spare cash that you have lying around on your Apple Pay card, um, five euros, for example, that would be great. We've not been able to pass the can around at the open mic night. Also, we've not been able to be paid by the bar because we've not been in the bar. This is not, I repeat, this is not a sob story, but if you would like to contribute to our not-for-profit association to, to, to enable us to keep going with this, that would be much appreciated. So thank you very much, and I shall see you when I see you. <laughs>